Yo, what's going on YouTube? I am Sue, but feel free to call me Pat. Over the past two days, I've been streaming a ton of Wuthering Waves here on this YouTube channel, as well as over on my Twitch page. And during that time, I keep getting asked the same two questions. One, why am I covering Wuthering Waves as opposed to Epic Seven? Uh, and two, what do I think about the game? So to answer the former question, I just really like anime inspired gacha games. They're usually very similar to RPGs, puzzle games, or card games, which are the three genres that I play a ton anyways. Also, it helps me be an educated consumer. And what I mean by that is it lets me see what the actual trends are in the market, in the industry, in these types of games compared to the one that I normally play, which is Epic Seven. I know from playing other games and just doing research that Genshin is basically the head honcho, the market leader. I know that Nikkei from playing it has a really good story and that my money spends comparatively very well in that game compared to a lot of other ones that are on the market. A game like Outer Plane, that doesn't really do anything for me because my main game Epic Seven already fills that niche. This game, Wuthering Waves, was hailed as potentially the Genshin Impact killer, meaning it has the potential to lead the pack in this space. That makes me stand up and take notice. Why is it so beloved? Why is everyone so excited for this game? So that's why, obviously, I want to try it. Does the game live up to the title of Genshin Impact Killer? What do I actually think about it? Well, that's what this short review is, detailing my first 12 hours with the game. Enjoy. Let's start this review off by talking about the game's visuals and performance. On a surface level, Wuthering Waves is absolutely gorgeous. Character models are incredibly detailed, and the world is absolutely stunning to look at most of the time. And I say most of the time because there's definitely a lot of oddities that I've encountered throughout my playtime. Usually, the draw distance in this game is pretty great, and I'm able to see objects from incredibly far away, but there are definitely times where I've experienced pop-in, especially with the game Shadows. Many of the game's NPCs are randomly blurry or low res during certain cutscenes. Almost like there's a blur filter put over them or something. Something you'd see in a video edit like this one. I've seen many other content creators and friends also have random crashes throughout their play, but I personally never had any of these issues. Kuro Games has addressed most of the issues that I'm talking about in a recent post saying that they are working tirelessly to fix them so we'll see how that pans out in the coming weeks. Lastly, while it's not super common, this game is filled with a fair bit of typos. There's also a lot of incorrect casing, and sometimes the subtitles randomly cut off. You basically have to hold down Alt on your keyboard and scroll through the various texts in order to actually see them. These are definitely minor issues, but they are very frustrating nonetheless. Moving on to talking about the sound, I want to give credit where credit is due. The sound design in this game is actually incredible. Hits feel really crunchy and super satisfying to land. It adds so much to this game's combat sandbox when playing it, especially with surround sound headphones. I can actually hear enemies off screen creeping up behind me and I can't anticipate their moves just by listening. This allows me to dodge simply through audio cues rather than having to use my eyeballs, which is much appreciated. That's what I expect from my action games nowadays in 2024. Even when I'm not in combat, the sound effects in general are simply great to listen to. I've had zero complaints with this aspect of the game, and it's arguably one of its strongest selling points. Moving on to the OST though, I think it's fine. I know other content creators have expressed how much they really love this soundtrack and how great it is, but to me, it's a little bit better than Epic Seven, which is pretty average fare for a gacha game in my opinion. Honkai Star Rail definitely excels over this game, I feel like, in terms of average track quality, and that's to say nothing of Ark Knights or Goddess of Victory Nikkei, which I feel absolutely dominate the gacha sphere with by far the two best soundtracks that I've heard. This brings us to voice acting. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know how much emphasis I put on voice acting and voiceover performance in general. I think it is one of the most underappreciated aspects of anime and video games. A truly great performance can make 
or if it's truly terrible, break an entire experience. I am very sad to say that Wuthering Waves English localization in this aspect definitely breaks my experience. Let me explain. Before we even talk about if the individual performances are good or if the voice direction is good, we have to talk about the audio quality and how terrible it is for most of the voice cutscenes in this game. It is very noticeable when switching to another language that the English dub audio is recorded at a significantly lower sound file quality. If you switch to Japanese or even the CN dub, you will instantly notice how much better the quality of the recording sounds. The voices in the English dub sound super compressed and it is very jarring to hear it when you are against that backdrop of crystal clear music and stellar soundscape that we talked about earlier. The volume, by the way, is also all over the place. It's not just the audio quality. Some characters feel like they're whispering to you while others are basically shouting at you. There's no consistency whatsoever with the sound levels in the English dub of this game. The performances aren't bad. It's just that they're a casualty of this really poor sound quality, volume mixing, and then also the word salad that is this game's localization. Moving on, let's talk about some gameplay features. In Wuthering Waves, you play as the Traveler. I mean, the Rover. I mean, look. So my friends who speak other languages, they tell me that the character's name is literally Traveler or Wanderer. I get that people want to compare your game to Genshin, but Rover isn't really doing it. It's kind of like antiquated English, I feel like, at this point. Anyways, Rover seems to have forgotten their memories, and the character is super important, and everyone wants a piece of them for some reason. I wish I could really expand more on that story, but the game is super fast to throw at you all these new terms, and they don't really explain what any of them are. The whole game just feels like word salad, and then your eyes start to slowly glaze over as you desperately look around the screen for a skip button that is only there about half of the time. In short, the story for this game isn't very good. And this apparently is the state of it after they completely rewrote the entire script for this game. Anyways, since the story is so bad, the first two hours or so of this game feel like an absolute slog. I'm just being talked at when all I want to do is explore and hit buttons. I feel many players with short attention spans might give up on Wuthering Waves in its opening hours, which, as you'll see when we talk about the combat, is probably a mistake. Regardless, for the story, there are at least some bright spots. Scar is a real treat anytime he is on the screen. He definitely is the driving force of the narrative and is what is holding the entire game together. Every time he's on screen, it's my cue to sit up straight in my chair and actually pay attention to the game. His boss battles also are really, really sick. The side story character, Lin Yang, was also a real highlight for me. It starts off as this generic and terrible storyline that I wanted to skip, but by the end, I found myself rooting for the character, and his trial dungeon was probably the most intelligently designed portion of the game that I've played so far. It felt very near automata with its side profile segments and approach to combat. Before we get into that combat though, let's talk about the world of Wuthering Ways, because at the end of the day, this is an exploration game similar to Genshin Impact. I think that the world has colors that are a bit more muted than Hoyoverse's vibrant color palette, but that's not necessarily bad in my opinion. Exploring to me is generally better than in Genshin Impact back at launch. Getting from place to place in this game never feels like a chore, and honestly it's more like a dream. It feels like playing one of the Spider-Man games on the PS4 or the PS5. There are a few hiccups where I got stuck from time to time on invisible walls, but those don't really bug me too much. I feel like those will get patched out and fixed very, very quickly. Puzzles in this world always felt very good in my opinion. Some of the stuff that I played in Genshin felt really easy and mindless, but surprisingly, a few of the puzzles in this game very early on actually had me stumped for just a little bit, and I'm curious to see if they actually get a bit more complex as the game goes on. Enemies in the overworld are largely brain dead most of the time in my experience, but the bosses are going to be an obvious exception. 
Defeating these enemies also gives you a chance to get Echoes. Echoes are basically like summons you could equip to your characters as extra tools during combat, and they also provide your character with stats. The stats are randomly generated with different sets and, well, also have various different substats. You know, like a certain other gotcha game that we cover here on this channel. Anyways, get subscribed. It's probably only a matter of time before I do a how to play for somebody like John Shin in this game. One final detail for the world that I found really cool is that enemies out in the wild will sometimes fight over certain territories. They'll basically fight to a certain dominance, which is pretty cool. Haven't really seen a game do that in a long while, so props, Kuro Games. Now it's finally time to talk about the combat sandbox in this game. Wuthering Waves has easily the best combat of any gacha game I've ever played, and to be honest, it's not too far off from one of the best combat sandboxes I've played in a video game, full stop. On the surface, the game may appear just like Genshin Impact, but there's a lot of intricacies in this engine. There's not only dodges, but also parries, which open up enemies for huge amounts of damage. The gameplay isn't just swap your character in, use their skill or ultimate, and then swap out. Instead, it's about finding your openings and punishing accordingly, like any good action game does. The three-person team nature and various assists each character can have thanks to the aforementioned echoes really makes this thing feel like a fighting game, similar to something like Marvel vs. Capcom. As someone who has casually dabbled in fighting games my entire life, that kind of combat system excites me. Once you get comfortable enough with the game's systems, you can start incorporating things like your grappling hook into your combos to go airborne and get a bit more creative. And keep in mind, I've barely scratched the surface of this game. I'm nowhere near the end game, and I have nowhere near all of the echoes unlocked. Lastly, let's talk about the game's gotcha systems because, well, it is a gotcha game. We kind of have to address it at some point. Surprisingly, this game, in my about 12 hours of gameplay, hasn't been really that generous with gotcha currency compared to other games that I've played. In the first eight hours alone, I didn't really acquire enough currency to actually hit the pity on the starter banner. It was only in the subsequent four hours or so that I finally started to actually rake in the pulls and acquire some five stars. Otherwise, the systems in this game are pretty similar to the ones that you've probably seen in Hoyoverse games. There's about a 1% chance to hit a five star character. And when you get a five star character, there's a 50-50 chance that it is the rate up. If you lose the 50-50, then the next time the rate-up character is guaranteed. The biggest quality of life here, though, is going to be, in my opinion, the weapon banners. It is always guaranteed that you pull the featured rate-up weapon, which in my opinion is massive. So far, just like with my experience in Hoyoverse games, weapons shine more than the characters. Even early on, it's noticeable that characters are doing two to three times the damage with gotcha weapons as opposed to the standard filler the game gives you to start with. Guaranteeing that players can get weapons is a really smart move from Kuro Games because I suspect that these will be a limiting factor for players in harder content. This game definitely feels like Goddess of Victory Nike did at launch. That game had major issues, but was able to course correct them in just a month or two's time, which propelled it to one of the top gacha games on the market. I often celebrate Nikkei here on this channel because it's doing everything right by its player base. It is the bar which I feel all gachas should at least try to rise to meet. There's definitely a lot of legwork to be done here to fix some of the game's core issues, those being performance, sound, and localization. My hope is that Kuro Games can rise to the challenge to fix the game's issues, especially in a timely manner. That said, I do feel really bad for the devs that are going to have to crunch to get this game in its best state before version 1.1. A game that is this good looking with a world this sprawling, fixing all of it must take a lot of man hours. For all of the shortcomings of this game compared to its competitors, Wuthering Waves has the best combat and gameplay systems of any gacha game that I am playing on the market right now. And at the end of the day, gameplay is what keeps me coming back for more, and it's why I think I'll likely be sticking with Wuthering Waves for the foreseeable future. But let me know how you felt about the game in the comments down below. 
And if you want to catch me playing Wuthering Waves live in the future, you can find me on my Twitch channel over at twitch.tv forward slash I am underscore TSU. For now, though, I'll leave you with the best Easter egg that I've found in the game. Enjoy. What? Ain't no way!